From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three anonymous donors. The first is a parishioner of St. Francis Xavier Parish in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, in memory of her husband who passed away on July the 2nd, 2010, and in thanksgiving for the televised Mass. The second is from Cody's New Brunswick, in loving memory of Robert and all their deceased members, for the spiritual welfare and return to the faith of family members, for the souls in purgatory, and in thanksgiving for the televised Mass and its celebrants. The third is from Smith Falls, Ontario, in memory of the deceased members of the St. James, McPhee, and Maher families. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today is the feast of Saints Peter and Paul. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the apostles Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day. Grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Praise shall continue. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, the son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. As much as the apostles Peter and Paul were both key figures in the origin and early development of Christianity, they were at the same time very different. They had different personalities, different cultural and religious backgrounds in education, different experiences of Jesus, different vocations. Peter, a Galilean fisherman, was one of the first to be invited by Jesus to join with him in his ministry of preaching and healing. Among the twelve, those whom Jesus chose to share in a more intimate way in his ministry, Peter occupied a special place. On a number of occasions, he was, as in today's gospel, the spokesman for the others. He was generous and impulsive and clearly committed to Jesus. In spite, however, of all that was positive in their relationship, he denied and abandoned Jesus at the moment of his greatest need. Peter's life, like that of the other apostles, was transformed by his experience of the risen Jesus and by the renewed mandate he and they received to proclaim to all nations the good news of what God had done for them and for humanity in Jesus. Through the gift of the Spirit, Peter was enabled to fulfill the promise contained in today's reading that he and his faith would be the rock on which the risen Christ would build his church. Unlike Peter, Paul was born not in Palestine, but in the Jewish diaspora in Tarsus, a city in modern Turkey. Educated in the Greek language and culture as well as in the Jewish tradition, he once described himself as a member of the people of Israel, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee. His zeal for the Mosaic law led him to persecute 
Christian believers as Jewish heretics. It was Paul's experience of the risen Christ, an experience in which, as he describes it, God revealed his son to me that the Pharisee became a Christian and the persecutor a dedicated apostle. Central to Paul's apostleship was his conviction from the moment of his conversion that his special vocation was to proclaim the gospel to the Gentile or non-Jewish world. Because of the many letters of Paul in the, name, in the New Testament, we know a great deal more about him and his activity than we do about Peter. What the letters reveal more than anything else is Paul's deep commitment to and union with Christ. I live now, not I, he said, but Christ lives in me. On another occasion, he asked, who will separate us from the love of Christ? His answer is categorical. Neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul was a tireless missionary who often found himself in dangerous and hazardous places and situations. He was also a mystic and a creative theologian. His insights and convictions have had an enormous influence on the development of Christian thought and Christian life. Our knowledge of Peter and of the leading role he played in the early church comes mainly from the Acts of the Apostles. There's a strong and ancient tradition that both Peter and Paul suffered martyrdom in Rome in the mid-60s of the first century. Both are associated in a special way with the church that grew up in that ancient pagan capital and that throughout history has played such a decisive role in the growth and expansion of Christianity. The words in today's gospel, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, are carved in Latin in the interior of the great dome of Michelangelo that rises above the central altar in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. The Catholic tradition sees the Pope, the Bishop of Rome, as a successor of Peter. It also understands him to be entrusted in a special way with the missionary vocation of Paul. Peter's gift is to ensure continuity in faith. Paul's is to open us to the broader world and to the future. In the course of church history, Peter has come to symbolize the institutional dimension of the church and in particular the role of bishops and in a special way of the first among them, the Bishop of Rome. In the first letter of Peter, the apostle describing himself as an elder exhorts other elders, other church leaders to tend the flock of God that is in your charge and to do so not under compulsion but willingly, not for sordid gain but freely. If Peter's faith is the rock on which the church is built, the risen Christ entrusted to him the responsibility of feeding his lambs, of tending his sheep. Peter and those who in different ways are his successors are called to be, as it were, sacraments of Christ, the Good Shepherd. To mark the feast, let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will deepen our appreciation for the life and witness of the apostles. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the intentions of our donors and of those who have asked us to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For world leaders, that they will have the wisdom and the courage to deal with the challenges facing them and their nations, let us pray to the Lord. For Christian missionaries, that they will be sustained in their commitment to the gospel and in their love for those to whom they proclaim it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Yes. By the mingling of this water and wine, become partakers of his divinity, the partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. <laughs> Gracious God, wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration, and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter foremost in confessing the faith Paul, its outstanding preacher, Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each, in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teaching of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul made steadfast in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our three donors for the gift of this Mass. Lord, whose love in humble service Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation.